Okay. From what I've been told about Norman Baker and what I've heard and what I've read, I feel like Norman Baker was a very intelligent man, that um, he was um, way beyond his time, and he just had a way of figuring out things. If he didn't know the answer, he figured them out. So I figure he was probably a tinkerer. He was probably very intelligent. He figured out how things work. He tried to heal whether it be ethical or not. He tried to heal people who were deathly sick. And uh, the know the naked truth was, hey, the doctors are not doing what they should, but I know what I can do. Basically a dog and pony show, but was he really all that wrong by injecting people with his concoction, which I understand was mostly kerosene? What's the difference between kerosene and chemotherapy? They're a poison, pick your poison. Um, from what I understand, he took a lot of money from people to try and cure their loved ones. Um, and when they died, the people were upset. That is probably why the bad. And I know that he was greeted by mobs of people at times when someone died. Um, no one really knows what they did with the bodies. There's, there's all kinds of theories out there that they're buried out by Lutheran homes, that they're buried, uh, so, that they put them in the river, that they were buried underneath the Institute. There's all kinds of stories about where he put the bodies. But, you know, if he didn't, uh, if he wasn't curing cancer and did he really want those bodies to be found to find out what he was actually injecting them with? I don't know that. Uh, the families were not happy with him, so they would go and spit on his grave. And so for a long time, they kept the location of his grave um, secret. Well, if Norman Baker even extended these people's lives a few weeks, at least the family members had extra time with these people. And I know how valuable that is. I've lost my mother, my grandmother, and my husband to cancer. And uh, yes, they all three went through chemotherapy, which again, what I, as I said before, that is a poison. Uh, maybe Mr. Baker just chose the wrong poison, but it extends life. Do I think that chemotherapy is a cure-all? No, neither is injecting people with uh, Dr. Baker's uh, concoction. But um, if it gives a little extra life, a little extra time for the loved ones to spend with their loved ones, um, is that all bad? I don't think so. Uh, when my mother was going through cancer and they told her that there was nothing more they could do for her, I sought out alternative met medicines uh, with herbs and everything. And I truly believe that we extended her life for a couple months. He had a way of convincing their, these people that there was a chance. And is that all wrong? Uh, right now, there's, there's therapies out there that boost the immune system, all right? If you have a positive attitude toward an illness that you have, is that all bad? You know, he was challenging the doctors to not just let, you know, a lot of times back then, you'd just let someone die. If they were dying of something, they didn't know what to do. At least he was trying. At least he was trying to find a cure. He was trying to help these people, uh, whether it be cancer or whether it have been some other kind of illness. He did have some successes. And if he w inflicted people with a positive attitude, the body's immune system can do wonders toward fighting infections or diseases inside the body. So was he all wrong? Maybe by injecting him with his concoction that he didn't really know what was going to happen, but he obviously had some success, some extension of life. Um, I think he was a man that needs to be respected because at least he thought outside the box. If we don't think outside the box and we don't challenge ourselves, then you never know what could be. Before he tried him on the first person, I would think that he had to have been, the intrepidation had to have been so great. That, but he was trying to help that person. And I truly believe from everything I've heard and read about Norman Baker that he truly did think he was helping these people. Does the American Cancer Society or the American Medical Association really want a cure for cancer? Um, they would lose a whole bunch of money if they did. Yeah. Um, chemotherapy, um, when my husband was going through chemotherapy sessions, it was $7,000 a session. Um, there is a horrendous amount of money involved in the treatment of cancer between radiation, the drugs, chemotherapy, um, hospitalization, um, the surgeries for cancer. If someone all of a sudden came up with a cure for cancer, 
um, it would be great for the American public, but it wouldn't be so good for the pharmaceutical companies and the, medic and the medical profession. Well, and maybe his challenges to the American Medical Association is what came up with radiation and chemotherapy. Maybe they challenged people to do a little further research and those, uh, those two um, medical treatments came into play because of his challenges. Who knows? But if you, know, if you tell somebody they've got pancreatic cancer, which is pretty much a death sentence, and you've got six months to live, what is that person going to do? Whereas with Norman Baker, he says, okay, you've got pancreatic cancer, which probably wasn't diagnosed at that time. But he says, I can cure you. I can help you. Mm -hmm. That gives the person hope. And was he so wrong by giving somebody hope? But giving hope is, uh, giving hope is what it's all about. Yeah. Because you never know what that positive attitude, that hope is going to bring you.